In today's episode, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen goes both ways. One balloon per person you say? Alrighty then. I choose this one. It's just an air filter. Just get me an air filter. Little to no regret. So let's get started. If it's not in writing, it didn't happen goes both ways. My new manager at work is one of those people that absolutely has to be in control. Even when you're exceeding every scorecard measure, keeping you head down, not putting a toe out of line, she still asks you to come to a meeting room to discuss some minor issue or another. Recently, she pulled me into a meeting to discuss me being late from work. Protocol is to call in, say we'll be late, then submit a schedule adjustment request when we arrived. She accused me of not calling in or submitting a request, but was able to prove I did, only instead of leaving it at that, she insisted I now needed to call her and explain why I was late. That's not the process, I told her, and she said she was making a new one. So now I call her at 6am on her day off to let her know if I'm gonna be late. She also had a meeting with me because my scorecard for a stat was 99 out of 100, with a target of 50 she had to point out the 1 out of 100 I missed. She also did the same for a handling time issue where I am hitting an average of 600 seconds with a target of 1500 she needed to tell me about a call I took too long on. Suffice to say, complaints have been raised to her manager. Following an incident where she was asked to follow up on something for me and claimed if it's not in writing, it didn't happen, I've been asking for everything in writing and repeat that mantra back to her when she claims to have told me something. Last week, she asked me to see her after my call. I walked over and she wasn't there, so went back to my desk. She asked me why I didn't stay around, and I reminded her of the time she put, in writing, that I wasn't to spend more than one minute waiting for her if she asked to see me, and was to go back to my desk to take calls, not wasting time. She asked me to come over again, and when I did, she wasn't there. This repeated twice more before my shift was over. Each time I documented logged out at 14.14 and 35 seconds p.m., came to your desk, you were not there, spent 45 seconds waiting, returned to desk and took another call at 14.16 and 38 seconds p.m. in chat. She messages me to ask what time I finish. I tell her it was two minutes prior, and she says we can catch up now. I tell her that my shift if over, and ask if she'll approve an overtime pay for an out-of-hours meeting. She tells me not to be silly, and it'll just take 10 minutes. I refuse and say if I don't get paid, we can do it tomorrow when I am being paid. She's typing, then not, then typing, then not, choosing her words. I know she's angry at being challenged, and she decided to employ one of the tactics she used when she managed a team for a company where this was standard practice, okay, well, if you'd like to go home now, I can always make it a formal meeting. A formal meeting where I work is code for a meeting with HR, documented on your record, for misconduct and repeated issues. She thinks she's won. Not a problem. Make a formal meeting, ensure I have 24 hours notice, send a formal invite, and I will bring a support person with me. I log out and leave, but not before grabbing screenshots and saving a copy of the chat logs. Next day, she's called my bluff and has a meeting scheduled. I send it to my union rep, and she comes in on the day. HR sits down with us and opens with so we're here today to discuss some concerns. Your team leader asked you to attend an off-the-cuff catch-up three times, and for some reason you refused? I quickly clarify what actually happened. My manager claims otherwise, and I repeat her mantra if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Then I supply receipts her demands to put things in writing, her chat, my timestamps, my call logs, and her message to me afterwards. My union rep stares at the two of them, with a small smile, and asks, so do you maintain the position that employees should attend meetings unpaid, and that misconduct investigations are a good use of resources if they refuse? HR said there may have been a miscommunication, and that I could return to work. I have it put in writing that I am not accused of any misconduct, and have been cleared of any false accusations, with nothing documented on my staff file. Yesterday, my team was advised that our team leader had decided to pursue opportunities outside of the company, and we were getting a new manager. One balloon per person you say? 
Alrighty then. I choose this one. This happened a couple of years back, on my co-worker's birthday. I ran out that morning to the party store to grab a small balloon bouquet. Wasn't going for anything fancy, just one Mylar birthday balloon with two or three solid colored latex balloons to match, a fairly standard arrangement. It was a little after 10 am, the store had just opened, and I was the only customer in there. I walked up to the counter to order my balloons, and the woman working there asked me if I had pre-ordered. I told her I hadn't, and she informed me that she couldn't do it for me. Apparently, if I didn't pre-order, it was their store policy that they could only do one balloon per person, per visit. I looked around I am still the only customer in the store. Now, I would totally get why this would be something the store would have to enforce if there were other people waiting, but again, there was nobody else there, and filling up three to four regular balloons would maybe take about two minutes tops, and it was pretty obvious at this point that this lady was really just being lazy. I apologized and explained that I wasn't aware of their policy, and would remember to call ahead in the future, but asked if she could help me out, because I was trying to get them for my coworker whose birthday was that day. She answered me abruptly with a, sorry store policy. I think about it for a second, and tell her to hold on for a minute. If I can only get one balloon, I would like to pick a different one. I went back to one of the birthday party aisles and found a package for a full-bodied, Mickey Mouse balloon. Now, if you've ever seen one of these full-bodied character balloons, you'll know that it's made up of multiple parts, head, arms, body, legs, feet, etc., that need to be individually blown up and then assembled to create the character. This is then completed with putting weights and rollers on the feet so your balloon can walk. It is technically one balloon though. I went back and handed the package to the lady at the front counter, shrugged and said, if I only get one balloon, it might as well be a good one. I then proceeded to watch her struggle to figure out how to assemble it for the next 15 to 20 minutes. I can't say I've ever spent $20 on a single balloon before, but it was totally worth it to watch this woman angrily assemble my single balloon, when if she'd just done what I had originally asked for, I probably would have already been back at my office. I only wish I could have watched her watch me as I left, walking hand in hand out of that door with my freshly created Mickey Mouse balloon. It's just an air filter. Just get me an air filter. I've been reading a few of these stories for a while and having a chuckle however one has reminded me of a buddy of mine who used to work for a popular car parts store. I'm not the best at telling this story and I only ever witnessed it firsthand once but here goes. He was working at the parts store one day a week on the weekend while studying at uni. At least once every other shift he would have someone come in and ask for an air filter for their car. No details as to what make slash model slash year etc. Just get me an air filter, they are all the same. So one day he was looking through their system and had someone try this on and it got him thinking. He found the most expensive air filter he could get his hands on. From memory it was for a cat diesel bulldozer or something. Retail the thing was like $1,200 and stood about 1 m tall and about 200 mm round, 39.4 inches tall. Thing arrived during the week and co-workers had to hide it from branch manager as they were told of his plan. Took about a week before someone came in demanding an air filter for their car. Sure, what kind of car is it? Just get me an air filter, they are all the same, QMC. Bear in mind a standard bench is 0.9 m tall, he slams 1 m tall filter on desk, scans it in system and acts rather surprised at the cost. Sorry sir, it's a bit expensive, retail says $1,200. Don't think I'll be able to do any discount on this one. Now as I said I only saw him do this once, and I don't know how he would keep a straight face, but the next words out of the customer's mouth was always, but last time I only paid $40. His answer, well, this here is the best filter we got, I don't want to sell you rubbish, and have you come back complaining to my boss about me not doing my job. They would always then give the details and he would get them the filter needed. This filter was at their store for probably two years before the branch manager figured out they had a ridiculously priced filter they couldn't sell for something they don't ever get asked for parts for, he found it and had it sent back. Meanwhile at least once a week someone working at the store would get to use the filter for some MC before the customer would give them their car's details. 
little to no regret. So I was recently, about six months ago, hired by a big company to do IT. During one of the training sessions, we were told to do 10 to 25 tickets a day. The tickets took a maximum of three minutes to answer if it was an easy case, as most of us had replied written up that we used over and over. So one day, I did 31, another day, when I was being lazy, I still did 27. Boss's supervisor was thrilled at me. One of my higher-ups was not. I was clearly making her look bad, because like I said, minimum per day was 10, and she's a skater. So she decided to spend all the free time she clearly had combing through my replies to tickets with a fine-toothed comb, tearing apart every word and reply as much as she could. Two days after I was told my work was great, I was informed that all work had to be submitted to a higher-up and approved before being sent in. I was like WTF? Two days ago you said all was well. But I just smiled, said no problem, and then was handed a printed out Excel spreadsheet by pissed lazy higher-up detailing her shredding work. Three minutes into reading, I decided to go hunting. None of her responses were bad, all she did was reword things, some of which I didn't even write as I had used replies that my trainer had been using for years. So I had asked at some point how to know how many tickets I do, and boss's boss had sent me a link into her account where not only could I see what cases I had done, but everyone's cases. That's when I discovered why lazy higher-up hated me, I was putting her at risk of being fired by running circles around her. So since lazy worker had been there longer, of course she was listened to. After a heated senior staff meeting, boss's boss took all us newbies aside and said we all had to get our work approved by a higher up before sending it out. Now, I had shared a lot of my shortcuts with my coworkers, so we were all doing more work than our superiors got done. That must mean we're badly trained, right? Well, let me tell you the stupidity of that instruction. You see, I worked here one. So anything I didn't know, I was already asking people about as were my co-workers down on tier 1. But by not letting us submit anything at all, work came to a more or less standstill, with our higher-ups run ragged going back and forth and back and forth proofreading all our tickets before we could send them. This meant that they couldn't get any of their own work done until after all us temps left for the day, which meant our already painfully slow ticket response time was 10 times slower, with us noobs only able to submit 5 to 10 a day instead of the 20 to 30 we were doing just a day before the new absurd mandate, and the upper levels had no time to do tickets of their own after having to approve all of ours all day every day. It's really hard to explain how pleasing it was to watch lazy higher up running around, because of course, we all asked for her feedback, since she clearly didn't agree with her fellow upper tier people's emails that we had to work with. So she and she alone could truly tell us how to word things, right? After all, I had a printed Excel sheet, page after page after page of her tearing apart the replies her co-workers at her level had been using, and all our jobs were on the line over this, as we needed to show immediate improvement. This lasted a whopping three days before we were all fired. That's right, fired, because if the managers had to read and approve our responses, clearly we were not cut out for the job. Um. You told US to get them approved, remember? But honestly, I don't care. It was the most entertaining three days I ever spent in tech support. I do feel a little bad for lazy workers' co-workers who were also worked to the bone doing our jobs as well as theirs, but since none of them spoke in our defense, clearly, my sympathy for their plight is limited. Thanks for watching.